Okay, so finally we get to talk about transcription. And transcription and translation that will follow is basically DNA giving a message. DNA is kind of the uh, warden of the prison, so to speak. It actually goes out, it's the boss. It goes out and it basically gives orders to everybody and everybody has to listen. So DNA is kind of in that job title, right? It can step out of the office and say, hey, you, go do this. And then they got to go do it. And and DNA kind of likes that kind of relationship, and DNA will stay in that job title as long as it can uh, because it is conservative. So it has self-protected itself from getting fired. So in step two, this is the transcription portion of DNA. And what we've seen is that DNA begins to unwind, and DNA can basically replicate itself and go from generation to generation to generation. But then at the same time, DNA has to provide a message. So while it's in the cell, while it's basically in its spot, in its office, it has to go out and it has to tell certain things what to do and how to do their job. So the DNA can unravel again. And this unraveling process happens at what we call a promoter site. And it doesn't unravel the entire thing. What happens is that a piece of it is kind of ripped apart at a time, and this promoter site begins to start making a message. And this message is then sent off to something else in order for that thing to go do its job. So we call one strand of this separation process a sense strand, and we call the other one, the complementary strand, as the template strand. So again, we see the same kind of thing that happens in replication. But in transcription, the DNA molecule separates, and it separates so it can start writing a message, giving something some orders. So the template strands are read in the three prime to five prime direction, and what happens is that a different and this different strand that is made is called RNA. So this is the production of RNA for our body. So DNA actually gives birth to the RNA molecule. And it does that by separating its strands. It uses one of its strands to make a copy. And this copy is making RNA. So RNA can go out and deliver the message. But it's the RNA creation that DNA does. Now remember, RNA is ribonucleic acid. So the sugars that are involved in this production is not the 2-deoxy form. This is truly ribose that has these OH groups on it. At the same time, whenever we see thymine, we are going to replace that with uracil. So whenever we have typically thymine show up in the DNA replication part, well, the T is going to be substituted for the U. Uh, and we talked about the reasons for that as well. Once RNA is made, DNA doesn't want RNA to come back to the office and say my job is done. DNA wants RNA to go out, deliver a message, make something do its job, and then get rid of itself. It wants itself destroyed. So we put these OH groups on there to allow these to become nucleophilic sites again so that we can have some reactions that go on with these ribo units and they can start breaking down. The same thing happens with the uracil. We talked about the difference between uracil and thymine, and we talked about how one is more stable than the other due to the methylation that goes on. So what we have to keep in mind is that not the entire DNA chain is important. Uh, actually, 98% of it is completely useless. So that means this 3.1 billion base pair, six-foot molecule that gets wrapped up inside uh, of these proteins and crammed and sandwiched inside of your cells, 98% of it is useless doesn't do squat. At least we don't think it does at this point. So 2%, 2% of your DNA actually relays a message and is actually important in this whole transcription process. And we have areas of the DNA that are important. So some of it's useless, some of it's important. Well, 2% of it's actually important. And these pieces are called introns. And the important pieces 
are called exons. So exons kind of make an exit, right? So they go out and they deliver a message. They help deliver a message. The introns, which are 98% of the DNA, well, it doesn't really do anything at all. It's just there. It's taking up space. It doesn't really have a message that it has to deliver. So because of that, well, we don't really see any activity with those fragments. So this is the definition between intron and exon. Again, exon, 2% of DNA, Exxon because it exits and it goes out and it helps relay a message. So before RNA is made, what happens is that all of the introns are cut out and the fragments are reassembled and that reassembly is called RNA splicing. So this DNA molecule that's huge has all of these introns that are there and these introns are ignored. They do not get transcribed. Only the exons, the important pieces, are transcribed. And these exons, once they fragment or once they uh, replicate and once they get created, these exons are then kind of all glued back together and reattached by something called an RNA splicer. Okay, so this is the creation of RNA, ribonucleic acid, and it's coming from your DNA molecule. So here, what we're showing you in this slide is DNA strands. So this is a, uh, the two parent strands that are coiled together, right? One is written in five prime to three prime, and one of them is written in in three prime to five prime and this strand has to be separated so here we see the separation of the two strands one of them is called the sense strand and one of them is called the template strand so when RNA is made what happens is that RNA takes a look at the strand that runs three prime to five prime so that way it can be made in five prime to three prime order that is the order that all of these strands are preferred to be made in right so this template strand a goes to U, G goes to C, A goes to U, G goes to C, C goes to G, T goes to A, A goes to U, you get the drift. So this RNA is starting to be made one base at a time. And we start off with the five prime end, we get these bases that complement each other, and then this is the creation of the RNA inside of our body. So it's all due to the DNA. The DNA is what causes all of this. So once we start taking a look at all of these introns and exons, what happens is that the DNA molecule takes a look and it says, okay, well, this red area, that's important. This intron, though, doesn't do anything for me. And then this exon, well, that's important. And then here we have another intron. That doesn't really do anything. So what happens is that these fragments are synthesized in pieces, and then these pieces are basically just spliced together. So we see the first exon, the second exon, and the third exon coming together, and all of this empty crud in the middle that doesn't do squat is just completely left out. Who cares about it? It doesn't really do anything at all. And then it takes these exons and it glues them and splices them all back together. And you can read about the RNA splicing up here at the top. It is a reaction that goes on. We can talk about that reaction, but that's something that I'm not really going to be concerned with. Uh, here is basically another representation of the same thing. You see that this uh, RNA or pre-mRNA, what we call it, has an exon here and an exon there. There's an intron in between that doesn't do anything. So we have the uh, Lariat reaction that goes on. So this thing almost looks like a lasso. Right, So what we see is that this intron uh, comes around on itself, it gets spit out, and then these two important pieces are spliced together. And that is what will lead into the translation portion of the RNA. So again, we can take a look at this video and uh, we can um, uh, continue on with the video. Uh, with the transcription portion now of the um, um, 
uh, process itself. What you are about to see is DNA's most extraordinary secret, how a simple code is turned into flesh and blood. It begins with a bundle of factors assembling at the start of the gene. A gene is simply a length of DNA instruction stretching away to the left. The assembled factors trigger the first phase of the process reading off the information that will be needed to make the protein. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a basically a protein being latched onto the DNA molecule because something has to go in and separate the two strands together, right? So that's what this protein is basically getting ready to do. Everything is ready to roll. Three, two, one, go. The blue molecule racing along the DNA is reading the gene. It's unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. The yellow chain snaking out of the top is a copy of the genetic message, and it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to copy the A's, C's, T's, and G's of the gene. The only difference is that in the RNA copy, the letter T is replaced with a closely related building block known as U. You are watching this process called transcription in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. Okay, so that's where we stop the actual production of RNA. And we'll continue on with this video a little bit later because there's actually more steps to this story. So again, we're taking it in baby steps, but hopefully you get a clear understanding now of what's going on inside of this DNA molecule. So like the video just showed is that this DNA molecule has a protein that latches down and it separates the two strands from each other so that one of these strands can start to get replicated. And this strand that begins to get replicated is called the template strand. And this template strand is called the template because it provides the template needed in order to make the RNA. And that's what you saw basically kind of getting spit out of the side in that yellow chain. So this is creating an RNA molecule. And now that RNA molecule is going to have to go out and it's going to have to deliver a message. So this is the creation of RNA from DNA and again these base pairs are important because you've got to keep in mind we are putting the OH group on the sugar and we're putting uracil in the mix instead of thymine and all of those bases are coming in through that protein configuration so very complicated but beautiful chemistry and biology that goes on in order to get this process to go forward so in the next video we'll continue on with with this and we will talk about more about RNA the purpose of RNA and why RNA is actually needed in your body